Good afternoon. My name is Christine Milano, and I have the pleasure of serving as the Assistant Director with the Career Center at Seton Hall University. At Seton Hall University, we have a variety of resources available to students through our Career, Cent career Center services to help support career exploration, including a team of dedicated advisors along with our events, particularly our career fairs held on campus, along with various networking forums. For students in other colleges and universities, you should check with your career centers to learn more about the career services available to you. Today, I have the exciting opportunity to welcome you to this session. I hope all the attendees are enjoying the conference so far. For those of you who have been listening in today, you have heard about the growth and available jobs of the cybersecurity field. Our session today, A Day in a Life, What It's Like to Work in Cybersecurity, will give you an opportunity to hear, about, to hear from the industry pros, a panel of young professionals who are working in amazing roles in cybersecurity. How do they get their jobs? What do they absolutely love about their positions? What challenges do they face? And of course, how did they decide to focus on the cybersecurity industry? But first, before we um, get to our panelists, I am happy to introduce Eric Lopez, security architect at Seton Hall University. Eric will be moderating the session today. And now I'd like to introduce our panelists. Nicholas Mangano, SOX analyst with Cyber Reason. Ryan Segluzio, security analyst with Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health. And Hayden Rossi, security engineer at Eastern Bank. All the panelists today are recent oh, Seton Hall okay. University graduates. Go Pirates! We're excited to have them join us and you will learn more about them as they share their perspectives. Throughout the panel, if you have any questions you would like to ask, please be sure to enter them into the chat area as we will have uh, we will read as many of your questions during the Q&A towards the end of this session. And with that, I turn it over to you, Eric, to begin today's session, A Day in the Life, What It's Like to Work in Cybersecurity. Thank you so much, Christine. I'm very excited uh, for the opportunity to speak with these gentlemen here today. I've known each of them for uh, quite a few years. I've seen each of them grow a lot, uh, not just in their academic uh, careers, but also in their work careers. And so I'm excited to hear more about what they've been going through. Uh, gentlemen, why don't we just start real quick? I think uh, several of the people who are viewing this today are curious. Did you start off with a technical major? Uh, were you thinking about cybersecurity from the beginning? Or was there a process that happened where cybersecurity now all of a sudden clicked with you and the opportunities open for you to get into the field. Uh, Ryan, why don't you start us off? Sure. So um, I actually started off as a, a computer science major. That's what I got my degree with. Um, and basically from the start, I thought I thought that's what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I really enjoyed coding um, in, in high school, and I just thought that that was the, the way I was going to go. Um, I didn't really know a whole lot about the, the cybersecurity uh, industry as a whole until until a lot later in, in college. Um, so I started off doing doing uh, computer science and as I as I went through my degree, I realized that it, it just really wasn't wasn't um, all that I thought it was. Um, and then especially over the summer I had uh, over two different summers I had internships doing actual IT work. And I just found that I liked that a lot more. Um, constantly having having different different challenges, always learning something new. That just seemed uh, like something that I enjoyed a lot more. So I knew I knew IT was the direction that I wanted to go. Um, and then from there, it just it became uh, finding the the right the right niche for for me to fill. And and honestly, that's where Eric and the the security team came in at Seton Hall um, when when I first started the the security certificate program was still um, in, in its in its earliest years. So they were very eager to get to get as many of us involved as we can. Um, and once I once I, I started following that and learned more about it, I just it was just it just seemed really interesting. Um, and I knew that's that's the direction I wanted to go in. That's great, Ryan. Thanks for sharing. Hayden, you've got an interesting story. I remember you uh, joining our cybersecurity boot camp. Uh, you were very eager. I remember you always raising your hand and participating. But I also know you mentioning during that boot camp that you had already about a year or two of internship experience doing things like networking and wiring and all that other stuff. 
So uh, maybe you want to share a little bit about, you know, what was your major when you started at Seton Hall? Uh, and then how did that evolve between doing those internships and then now landing where you are as a security engineer? Yeah, sure. So um, when I was back in high school, I really enjoyed helping people out with, you know, their technology issues, whether it was, you know, resetting a password. Oh, you got a phishing email, like, you know, that kind of sort of easy stuff. And then I kind of knew that I wanted to get into technology going into freshman year because um, I was always pretty good at the IT classes and I was always helping people out, trying to teach them as much as I possibly could, make it easier for them. Um, but yeah, my freshman year, I was able to um, have my first internship and I worked at a vendor out of Connecticut They're called NWN Corporation. Um, and yeah, I was just doing networking. Um, we were at the Yale University campus site. We were installing VoIP phones. And uh, yeah, it was just really good, I guess, you know, boots on the ground experience getting into networking. And then that kind of transitioned from networking um, into my next internship at Trinity College up in Hartford. Um, and that was basically just, you know, I was the IT computing assistant. I was helping everybody out in the IT department. You know, we were doing network installs, you know, we were doing VoIP installs, any sort of tickets that came through. So just kind of getting that precursor experience, um, you know, in technology. And then when I heard about the cybersecurity program um, at Seton Hall, how it was new and then working with you, you know, at that boot camp, um, it got me really excited. And that was really my first introduction into cybersecurity. Um, I had an internship that had previously kind of touched on it, um, but it was more on the IT help desk side. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, when I was at Seton Hall, I was IT management and then minored in cybersecurity. So I kind of knew from the beginning. So, okay, that's great. Thanks, Hayden. And yeah. then Nick, uh, your story is very interesting. You want to share a little bit about your background, your major, um, what you and maybe even your parents originally thought you were going to get into, uh, and then just kind of give us a little primer uh, on how you landed in cybersecurity. Yeah, so my path was completely different than both of you guys. I was uh, undecided going into my first year of college, came into my second year, still didn't know what I wanted to do, ended up being a business major. Um, but it was kind of at that point where I knew I was interested in computers. Uh, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, you know, it was a mix of taking different IT classes and then uh, and then doing the cybersecurity boot camp that kind of got me interested in cybersecurity. And I happened to apply for the security analyst position at Seton Hall. Um, you know, worked with Eric uh, for over a year and and got plenty of experience learning just even the basics of cybersecurity. You know, just what is being a security analyst? What do you got to do? What are you looking for? Uh, and like I said, I went into it knowing absolutely nothing. I was a business major thinking I was going to land a, a job doing, you know, sales or something. So, um, you know, uh, once I got involved into the cybersecurity field, it just it took off from there, piqued my interest immensely. And and uh, to this day, I still gathering information, learning new stuff all the time is is the most important thing. That's awesome. Thanks, Nick. So I'm always curious, you know, you've gone through your academic career. Now you've had about a year or so uh, in the real world, right, the working field. Uh, if you could kind of go back, what are some of the things that you may have changed um, that you did during your college years? I mean, would you have pursued another major at an earlier time during that you know, academic career? Uh, are there maybe some certifications or something you would have tried to do that you think would have helped? Uh, or do you think the path that you took was good enough? Whoever would like to share. I mean, I can start off. The first yeah. thing I'll say is the most important thing I wish I did was I wish I, uh, started getting involved in IT a little bit more. I, I, you know, I, like I said, I was undecided the first year. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I knew I was interested in computers, but you know, I was like, oh, I'll just be a business major and do sales. Um, you know, I should have just gone straight into the IT, uh, should have started looking up different certifications. I could have got like the net plus sec plus, um, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's definitely what I would do differently. Perfect. And did did you actually, um, were you able to get one of those certifications? Not yet. I'm on the path to completing one soon. I should have it done by next year before the start of the new year. Okay. And one one question I think some people who are still, you know, studying and they're trying to figure things out. I, I do get a lot of questions from students who say, what certification should I get? Does it really matter? Um, so you just tell us you've yet to get the certification, but obviously you landed a job, a really good job pretty quickly. What are some of the skills? What are some of the characteristics that you think helped you uh, land something so good so quickly? 
Uh, I think the most important thing is just being open to learning information, uh, going on and doing things on your own, even, you know, searching around the, the Internet for different cybersecurity videos and, and, and learning things. Um, because obviously cybersecurity is ever evolving. It's never going to stop changing. There's going to be new threats. There's going to be new things to learn all the time. So, um, you know, the most important thing is to, to keep up with all that information. And you could do that by just doing a little bit of research here and there, even getting your hands on some uh, type of labs uh, that are available. You know, there's free labs online you can do and even YouTube videos. Those are those were um, the most important thing for me. That's great. That's great. I want to pivot real quick to Hayden. Uh, Hayden, I love your story uh, because I know, you know, coming out of college, you know, you were kind of dead set. You you kind of had a, a geolocation, a place that you wanted to be. Um, you ended up with a startup company, I believe, right? And you yep. obviously got a ton of experience there. Uh, and now you're with a, an established bank. Uh, you know, share as much de as much or uh, as little as you feel comfortable with. But uh, if you wouldn't mind, maybe share with us what did that look like for you in terms of uh, the interview process with a startup company versus an established bank where you're working now, uh, and then some of the things you were able to do with that startup compared to what a larger corporation is having you do. Yeah, sure. But I guess to start, I'll just kind of talk about what it was like for me getting my first job right after graduation. So I graduated in 2020. We all know what happened that year. Um, it was a little tough finding a job all year. Um, but eventually, after just grinding, you know, on online, you know, getting all these applications out, I was able to get a position with a startup company up in Salem, Massachusetts. Um, and that company worked in the defense industrial base, which means they provide services for other organizations that provide military hardware and, uh, and services. So it was a really cool industry to get into. Um, it's an MSSP, so a managed security systems provider uh, or services provider. And um, it was just hitting the ground running. Um, it was a less than 20 person operation. Um, a lot of experience really, really quickly. Um, I was a one man SOC team for about six months in that company. Um, so just incident response, you know, daily alerts, policy writing, um, you know, just writing knowledge base articles because they didn't have any documentation. So one of the risks that you run with getting into a startup company is just if they don't have any developed, you know, I guess systems or processes, you kind of have to build those out from the foundation up. So um, that was really interesting to deal with right out of college. Um, unfortunately, around January of this year, maybe February this year, um, since it was a small company, they're going through a organization change in their structure, and they decided to just get rid of the entire security operations center. So I was caught up in the layoff. Um, but thankfully, um, after a lot of searching, um, a lot more career development in terms of getting more certifications, building my own lab, um, practicing, you know, looking at YouTube videos, like Nick said, um, I was able to land a position with Eastern Bank. They're based out of Boston. So. Um, to go highlight the interview process, it kind of varies on each company and their size. Um, when I was interviewing with that first company that I was with, um, it was very informal. They were, um, you know, they were professional, but it was very more like a conversation in your backyard, right? Um, because it was the three owners of the company. They just want to know if you're a good person or not. They want to get to know like some of your technical skills, um, what your thought processes are. Um, and then once you get to other companies like maybe some in a different sector like I, don't know, I was working in the div space and then like you know some military contractors like Raytheon and uh, GD Electric Boat um, they had a 10 person first round interview and they've all spoken with some pretty pretty high level people in the government so the stress level can be different um, the contents can be all different but at the end of the day just be ready for the technical questions right off the bat um, you know be genuine to who you are um and also just you know just be prepared that, that generally at the end of the day just be prepared and what would you say helped you the most with those technical questions that you talk about i would say you know just knowing the job role that you're applying to like usually i would hope if you're applying to the right position online they have a, a role description of what you're looking at right um so go through the role description and look up okay have i done this before you know have i used these tools before that they're asking you if you've used um what soft skills do you have because soft skills are really important in cybersecurity. because not only being technical you have to be able to relay that information to people either above you or next to you um and do it efficiently and very well so 
Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's all I got. So looking at the job description, very good. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for sharing that. I appreciate your transparency there. Uh, yeah, Ryan, I know you and I went back and forth for a while after you graduated. Um, I know, you know, coming out of college, uh, you had mentioned that you had some some contacts and things like that, and um, you felt like it was going to be a pretty smooth transition into the career field. Of course, we had the pandemic and other things take place. Um, maybe walk us through a little bit, you know, share as much as you're comfortable with. Uh, what was that like for you, you know, basically graduating in the midst of of the pandemic and then, you know, now looking for, you know, that that dream job, you know, wanting to be in cybersecurity. Yeah, so I mean, I'm sure Hayden can relate uh, graduating in the in the middle of, of a of a pandemic was definitely um, a big a big swing in. You know what 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 we were used to, I mean, really, the my first two years of college and my second two years of college, give or take a few months are just totally different um a lot of just a lot of change um one of the honestly one of the biggest things was um ha losing time with the uh the security program at, at seton hall um definitely something i missed but you know it, it is what it is and um yeah getting out of it <laughs> i'm sorry i just got got a little carried away um that's fine yeah so going from there looking for for the next job um it, it was definitely not not necessarily as smooth as, as i was expecting um we hear a lot of there's such a big uh need for for jobs and security there's such a a big labor shortage everyone's looking for these jobs and and you start to look at a lot of the job descriptions and and like entry-level positions and you start to notice that it's kind of it's kind of daunting what what some of these places are are looking for. Um, you know, I'm I'm sure Nick and Hayden and probably even Eric can relate that there's a lot of there's a lot of applying, especially for your first job. There's a lot of applying, and there's a lot of not hearing back or or hearing that that they went in a different direction. Um, so getting when you hear that you got an interview, um, it, it's definitely important to be to be prepared for that. Um, I I mean I only had a a few interviews, um, and it's important to make a really good first, second, third, however many impressions, um, because that that could be the the difference maker. Um, so the the process of of actually get, landing a first job definitely took longer than I thought it would. Um, but once you once you start interviewing, you get to know who who your manager will be, who your colleagues will be. It really it really makes a difference as to to what your work environment will be like, um, your your confidence in the interviews. Um, I had interviews with companies where it ju it just didn't didn't feel like the right mix of people, um, where everything just seemed kind of awkward in the interview and and interviews like that you're not you're not really too upset when you hear back that you don't get the you don't get uh, asked for a second interview yeah. or or maybe you do when you decide it's just not the right thing for me um so it's very fortunate that that where i ended up now it has just been such a a good environment everyone everyone's really eager to to teach and to learn nobody has nobody will look down on you for asking questions um yeah <laughs> sorry that's what i got no that's awesome right and uh no i appreciate you sharing that because I, I know it wasn't an easy journey um actually you know for for all three of you uh you know i know going back and forth with you uh, very closely you right those are things that even myself i took personally uh because i was you know i had the honor and the privilege of uh, being part of your journey uh but ryan while while i have you and while you're kind of in the flow right now um, can you talk a little bit about as you were putting your resume together or maybe a cover letter together, what are some of the things that you may have received feedback on uh, from human resource uh, professionals or recruiters that helped you kind of stand out and like actually land those interviews? Yeah, I mean, um, when I was there, there's definitely been quite a few uh, versions of of my resume. And I think one of the one of the things that I was able to do 
um, especially when I had that opportunity to talk with people, it is just see like what what about my resume like caught your eye, make note of, of what people are asking about. Um, again, like Hayden said, the so especially in cybersecurity and IT, the soft skills are, are very important. So it, it, it's good to, I mean, of course, it's good to like have all this experience with a lot of different tools, but it, it's really important to show that that you're an eager learner. Um, you're always trying to push yourself. You're always asking questions. Um, you're not like afraid to like to go somewhere you haven't gone before. Um, so I think especially with your first uh, when you're building out your resume and, and your cover letter to to really just try and show how how versatile you can be, how eager to get started you can be. Um, that that that's what I would recommend pushing. That's great. Thanks so much, Ryan. Uh, Nick, I just want to pivot to you uh, real yep. quick. I know during your journey, you were wrapping up school. Um, you know, you were really looking for jobs. And so you were kind of applying for a variety of different roles. Uh, and I know that you, even you and I had discussions about, you know, whether whether it was wiser to just apply for whatever or to take the time and focus on what you really want. Um, would you mind maybe just talking talking us through that journey, talking us through yeah. the process? What did you go through kind of in your mind? Um, what are some of the different jobs that you applied for? What was your experience? And then what led you to finally just kind of bite the bullet and say, you know what, let me go and apply for something that I genuinely want and that I believe I can I can get. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I, I started out, um, you know, as Eric said, I was applying to everything, all IT jobs, business jobs, everything. I was just trying to get something. Um, I didn't really think too much about it. I was kind of just like I wanted to get my first job. And then, um, you know, me and Eric sat down after I had an, an interview with a company that, uh, you know, I wasn't I was very unsure of, of what I would be doing and um, and what I would be and, and what I want to do. And, you know, after we had this conversation, we kind of came to the conclusion and, and, you know, he really enlightened me to, you know, if if cybersecurity and and you know the it field is or you want to like the security analyst field is where you want to be you should be applying for those jobs don't be just applying to it jobs just because you want to work in it you know if you're really going to put if you really want this position and and that's what you want to do then stick to it and something will eventually find you but like ryan said before the soft skills are the most important thing i mean i had plenty of questions going into my security analyst even my it interviews asking me about, um, I had a job at a, a lumber yard uh, prior to going to college and they would ask me, you know, what did I do there? What did I learn there? You know, um, you, um, and then other skills such as like, I worked at a warehouse after that and they asked me, you know, what did you do at the warehouse? What did you learn there? And a lot of it is is tuning it to what they're looking for. So like Hayden said, you're gonna be looking at their job description, their um, their kind of application and, and, and looking at what they wanna say and then looking at what you've done in the past and kind of using what you've done to answer their questions. So a, lo a lot of it comes down to just, you know, applying to what you want to do and and not just going all out there and applying to to everything because you'll end up getting something that you don't like. And then within, a, you know, a year or so you could move on and then you're kind of stuck and you lost a year from from doing that. So uh yeah, my uh, my path wasn't straight. That's for sure. I didn't have a very clear path, but you know, eventually it got it got straightened out after uh, after some uh, some talking points and, and whatnot. And uh, and and here I am today, and and loving what I do. So, yeah, that's great, Nick. And just you know, off the top of your head, what are some of the you talk about soft skills? You're talking about you know things you put on your resume. What are some of the things that you think they were really looking for that helped you kind of seal the deal in terms of getting that job offer? Yeah, so I think the most important thing was being able to work as a team. I think that was the the one the one point they they really wanted to to nail down was you know what would would I fit in in their team and um and part of that is is like I said using a lot of your past experiences and kind of explaining what you've done and, and showing them that you know yes I worked at the lumber yard but I also worked with other people there so there were other lumber workers and you know we had to go back and forth filling orders or answering customer questions stuff like that so um, you know uh, 
the most important thing is, is being able to to have the like like we've said soft skills and, and work with other people as well as being able to communicate with with customers even uh, I think that's that's also a huge thing um, yeah I, I mean uh, but working as a team uh, is definitely one of the most important things that, that any position for for any field will uh, will definitely they'll definitely look for that's awesome all right so I think we're at a good point right now I mean the title of this session is day in a life uh, Hayden uh, I want to go to you and um, can you give us an idea? I know you talked a little bit about your experience with the startup company, uh, but now you're with Eastern Bank. What does your day look like, right? What does your week look like? What are the things that you come in? Um, how do you prioritize your day? What are you tasked with? What projects are you given? Uh, you know, as much as you're able to share, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, sure. Let me just take a look at my schedule really quick. Um, <laughs> yeah, so early on in the morning, um, every day I check the cyber alerts queue. Um, you know, that's that's any alert that comes in from any of our appliances, um, our network, you know, any any alerts that come in, we have to deal with right away. Um, I deal with those right in the morning. Then I'll check my emails, you know, just because you have to. You have other um, in my position. Right. I mean, I'm not working at an MSSP, so I'm not facing other customers and other companies. I'm facing our internal environment for the security team. Um, so we have to deal with those sort of communications all the time. Um, then, you know, we have just random support tickets that come up because I watch two queues. We have our security engineering queue um, and the cyber alerts queue. Um, you know, there's meetings throughout the day, um, you know, using our app control, um, you know, tuning alerts, going on Splunk because I remember with um, Seton Hall, we're using Splunk a little bit. Um, you know, we have CrowdStrike as well in our environment. So I have a lot of experience with CrowdStrike and that first company I worked with GovCloud version and then now I'm on the commercial side of it. Um, so just kind of, you know, poking around the tools, looking at the queue, and that's kind of it. My um, my first priority is incident response. So if anything happens, I have to jump on it right away. Right. That's great. And now in the time you've been there, I mean, have you had to deal with any uh, incidents that you needed to respond to? I mean, do they have things pretty well documented there? Or have yes. you had to use the experience from your startup and kind of tr translate some of that over to where you are now? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, when you're working at like a startup, right, in, in a different sector, there's going to be different, um, you know, somewhat different threats that come in through the door. Um, like at that other company that I was working at, it was, you know, OK, this computer's infected or, oh, this one's got ransomware or, oh, we have to run some sort of operation. I can't really tell any more about. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of kind of government level security stuff right? that you're dealing with. And this one's more of like, oh, somebody clicked a phishing email. Is their account compromised? Mm. You know, so it's it kind of goes along the same direction. Like you want to make sure nobody's account is compromised and nobody's in your system that shouldn't be. Um, but you know, the types of threats that you see, I guess, are way different. That's great. Perfect. All right. Uh let's go over to Ryan. How about you? What does your day look like? Um again, it, it's there, there are some parts that are, are pretty similar uh with Hayden, and then of course some parts that are different, uh, especially with being in the in the healthcare system um and and because my role is I, I belong to a security operations and incident response team so we kind of have our, our hand in two different pots where some of it a lot of it is is incident response um things like like reported phishing emails um any kind of net, like any any network alerts that we get um any any potentially malicious activity that we get is one one half of what we do but we also have a lot of just making sure things are working because especially in the healthcare industry there's there's a lot of different a lot of different companies that make a lot of different um instruments and devices that are used to to keep people healthy help people recover um you know surgery tools all, all these different things and especially with things that are as precise as that you have to you have to be really careful, do a lot of testing beforehand that that things are working as they should. So so there there's nothing getting in the way of a doctor or a surgeon performing what they have to do. So so there's a pretty even split of um, responding to things when something goes awry and then uh, proactively making sure that that everything is running as smooth as possible in just day to day. That's great. All right, thanks. And Nick, I know uh, Ryan and Hayden, they both 
are securing internal environments. Uh, yep. You're in a bit of a different situation. Maybe uh, if you'd yep. like to kind of explain to us first the type of company you're working for, who your customers are, right? So you're not necessarily securing an internal environment, but many right. environments. And then kind of walk us through your day. Yeah, so we're uh, we're an EDP uh, customer. We're, we're a company. We're uh, uh, an endpoint detection and protection uh, um, a co a company, and uh, we we have a product that basically uh, is working on many customers, different uh, internal environments. Uh, you know, our product is is on their their servers, um, their their endpoint devices, their mobile devices, everything. I mean, it. it we uh, we we collect data from from all all different kinds of machines and and our algorithms what they do is is they pick up this kind of activity and they'll notify the customer based on what activity is going on specifically me what i look at is uh, we have a scoring system and anything that is scored above a certain level it automatically gets sent to an analyst so that's where we step in and and we have a queue where we can look at everything that's going on and it'll bring us to that customer's environment and we can take a look at you know what machine did this happen on what user account did uh, uh, what executed what what executed the process that uh, executed this uh, activity and stuff like that but it is uh, it's a little bit different because you're looking at so many different types of you know malware and and just windows processes linux processes mac processes and it's uh a lot of learning um like i said earlier there is so much information that you're never going to keep up with it but you need to do your best to try and keep up with it as as much as you can and um you know looking at different types of malware and stuff it kind of uh it gets you to pick up on other things so you see how different types of attacks happen um and 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 you figure out like ways to remediate it or ways that it, it even came in so there's been for example i've seen a time where there was a customer um that we alerted that they you know they had this type of malware in their environment and for about three days we kept getting alerts you know hey you know it moved to this machine now or it's moving to this machine so we saw that the malware was actually laterally moving across their network and, and gaining administrative privileges on on their servers and and their um even on their firewall they got into um and you know sometimes you have people who they don't think it's an issue until you know it is an issue and right. uh but just getting that experience of you know seeing all this different type of malware and stuff it definitely is a, a different perspective in cybersecurity because i'm not more i'm more so not doing the incident response but i'm kind of the front line so i'm, I'm seeing what's happening as it's happening or right. you know slightly after it's happening as opposed to okay it happened already let's respond to it now um yeah that's great that's great and i love the fact that all three of you are, are really you're in the industry and you're experiences are totally different um, but as we speak about things like hey there's malware it's laterally moving across a network it's infecting servers and firewalls or i'm trying to protect healthcare related systems and you know uh, patient information or i'm trying to protect financial systems i think there might be some people who are watching this who are like wow that's not for me that's super technical that's way above my head um, you know if you were to put a little bit of your salesman hat on right now um, maybe you could speak to how did your company train you? How did they prepare you to do this job? Because obviously you didn't step into this role knowing exactly what to do, right? So let's start with Hayden. Why don't you tell us a little bit about um, whether it's the first company, second company, or both. What is the training you went through? Give us that sales pitch and, and you know, just to kind of ease the tension a little bit uh, because we have a lot of technical jargon here. And I don't want people to think that you have to be super technical to really succeed in this field. Yeah, sure. I'll start. So um, that first company I was with, um, I didn't get any training at all. Um, I was self-taught and I was right, thrown into Move to the second company. OK, <laughs> <laughs> um, so the second company, um, they have a lot of great training. Uh, it was a lot of working with my manager. Very helpful. So much advice. And then working alongside our senior security engineer as well. She's been amazing, too. Um, everybody's very supportive and they understand that if you don't know certain things they will fill it in for you so like one of the things that i was told right after my my interview my final interview when i accepted the offer was you know um when you're interviewing for these positions they don't 100 percent look for like do you know all this stuff you know if you have a good personality and you get along with the people who interviewed you um 
but also balance it out with you know what you're talking about, um, they will pick you. You know what I mean? Like you have to find the right person, not just like a machine who can do all the tasks and check a box, right? You have to make sure that you're personable and that they like you. So um, in some of the interviews, I didn't know everything and you don't need to know everything, but you just need to be honest about it. You can't lie because um, they will find you out um, sooner or later and you'll be looking for another job soon. So um, yeah, I mean, just make sure that when you get there, you give your honest effort. Um, you put in that attitude of being hungry to learn more. You're always on YouTube, you know, don't burn yourself out after because, you know, you can only do so much cybersecurity in one day, but um, just really develop that hunger for the, the industry and just, you know, helping people out. So that's awesome. And Hayden, what advice would you give to the student who is not a computer science major, has nothing to do with IT, um, but just over the past maybe month or so, cybersecurity is something that they're seriously starting to consider. Uh, what advice would you give them in terms of, you know, does it matter that I don't have an IT related um, degree that I'm about to complete? Yeah, so um, in this case, I mean, just play around on a computer. I mean, that's that's what it really kind of boils down to. Are you a curious person? Do you really enjoy figuring things out? Um, OK, I want to build a lab. Well, how do you build a lab? There's a lot of different people online that can tell you how to build a lab. But then it's like, OK, what tools do you put on it? Well, then it turns into a rabbit hole. You know what I mean? So if you're curious, it doesn't matter what you know, what major you were, what your interests were prior. If you're a curious person, you want to figure stuff out, you enjoy puzzles, you enjoy helping people out. Um, this is, you know, this is the industry for you. You know, I mean, yeah, there's technical stuff in it. You'll pick up along the way. I mean, I'm I'm two years into my career so far and I'm learning so much more than I've I've ever learned before. Right. Um, and you see other people above you that are like, how the heck did you get so good at this? You know what I mean? So it's um, just be curious, be interested in it, do stuff, you know, like build the stuff on your own, figure it out yourself. You know, uh, these video courses online at Udemy are a great resource. It's Jason Dion. Um, I took a couple of his courses for my certifications. They're great. You know, they have sales all the time. You can go on cybrary.com. Um, you know, there's plenty of other free online resources. Um, definitely check those out. That's awesome. Thanks, Hayden. Hey, Ryan, let's pivot over to you. Um, same thing, right? Students who are they're they're looking forward to this. They, you know, they were really excited until they started to hear you guys who are in the industry talking a lot of tech jargon. So maybe they're a little overwhelmed. Uh, how can you ease their concerns a little bit? What is some of the training you went through when you started at Robert Wood Johnson? Yeah, so again, I mean, I can't give enough credit to the team uh, to at the team uh, RWJ. Um, they pr from from the very beginning, um, I made it clear that there there's a lot that I didn't know. I, I mean, it was an entry position um, fresh out of college. There there's a lot there's a lot that you just don't know, especially in, a, in an industry that you've never uh, like, you know, worked too much in. And um, they were they were, knew the same thing from the start. They said this is it's an entry level position. Um, we don't expect anybody to know any everything. So as long as you're as long as you're curious, as long as you're you're taking notes, as long as you're trying to learn as much as you can, there's there's really not a whole lot that you won't be able to accomplish. Um, yeah, especially I mean still now, but especially in my first uh, few months at the job, I, I felt I felt like I didn't know anything because there's just so much information all at once. Um, but I mean, over time, it, it just gets a lot easier. There's more, you know, before you know what you're explaining something to somebody that was that was a foreign language to you just a, a few weeks prior. Um, so it, it, it kind of depends on on the environment you're going into. Um, but there's if you find a, a good employer that that's eager and willing to 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 work with you, you, you have a it'll it'll be a lot easier getting getting into it than you expect. Um, another thing on top of that is um, if you can find an employer that that's willing to invest in you, that's also a really good a really good sign and a, a place that you want to be. Um, I'm fortunate enough that we're we're able to take uh, courses with a, an organization called SANS, which mm -hmm. is it's one of the, you know, I'm, I'm sure you guys know, but for everyone else, it's, it's one of the the top training courses for organizations for cybersecurity. They have 
so many different classes from industry experts on on everything you can even imagine. Um, and, and I mean, they're 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 expensive. Um, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> finding a, finding a, a place that's willing to to invest in you, it, it, it's it really is a confidence boost. Um, it makes you want to do do good by them in return. Um, it, it's a really good feeling. That's great. Ryan, real quick, there are a couple of questions came through. Uh, mm -hmm. I know Hayden, you did a great job of sharing things like Cyberary, mm -hmm. Udemy, uh, places where you can, you know, get discounts, like steep discounts on courses. Um, so Sands Institute, I know somebody put in there. Um, that's what Ryan is talking about. But Ryan, maybe you could share a little bit about some of the, you know, maybe cheaper or even free resources that you use just to stay on top of things. Are there websites, blogs, podcasts? Um, you know, do you sign up for webinars? Maybe share a little bit about that. Oh yeah, I mean, honestly, YouTube is probably one of one of the biggest ones. Um, there's there's all kinds of um, cybersecurity articles, especially. I mean, in the last few years, there's been so many articles and, and knowledge bases um, for that. There there's all kinds of free resources for. I mean, you can. Um, I know Sans is is pr pretty protective of their stuff. But um, especially with uh, CompTIA, they a lot of their old exams you can find online. Um, a lot of practice materials. Um, honestly, Google's your best friend for for stuff like this. Um, you might not be able to find like the the 2022 releases, but you'll be able to you'll be able to find a lot of stuff. And stuff doesn't go out of relevancy as quick as it might seem um, in this industry. That's great. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Nick, real quick, uh, training. OK, you you walk into Cyber Reason. Obviously, they, they you know, they liked you. You know, they wanted to bring you into their stock team. Uh, right. What did that look like for you? Because this is a different scenario, right? You now you're talking about a product. Yeah. Uh, so maybe you can just kind of walk us through some of the training you went through. Yeah, definitely. So I, I basically started out um, Immediately, they have a whole training course for you to go ahead and learn about their product. Um, you know, because the most important thing is being able to use the product itself. If you can't use the product, you know, how are you supposed to help other customers? So uh, for about a month, I had to do that and, and just kind of poke around with it and play around with it and, and do different kind of labs and stuff to kind of figure out, you know, OK, this is how I get here or, you know, even learning how to build a query. Um, to to search for things uh, that doesn't always you know come up uh, show you uh, up front you know when you're looking at an alert or something, um, and then from there it was a lot of shadowing and, and you know like Hayden and Ryan have said um, a lot of it is they're looking for you to ask questions um, and and those questions are kind of what's going to help you work as a team and when you're asking those questions they're they're hoping the, you know you're working with other people in your field or on your team and they're going to answer those questions for you and you're just going to build up your own knowledge base and, and figure out things slowly over time um but yeah it's it was a lot of uh, a lot of just poking around with the product itself and then shadowing with other members of my team and them explaining you know what their kind of process is of, of okay going ahead and, and looking at you know this type of alert or you know this kind of malware and stuff and then me taking notes and and eventually getting into going on my own and, and just poking in an environment and, and looking for things and trying to see if I can find something that, you know, my, my team member has found um, that looks pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so that was, uh, yeah, that was pretty much my training process. That's fantastic. No, thanks for sharing. I'm seeing a couple of questions come in. A lot of them are centered around resources. How do I stay on top of things? Uh, what's your go-to social media account uh, for the latest, you know, cybersecurity trends? Do you have a favorite? Oh, I know a big one that I look at pretty much every day is bleeping computer. Um, oh, yeah. Enough, a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, new types of alerts and. Um, mm, Creds you know, on security zero. as well. Yeah, right, right. Yep. Um, those are, that's probably my number one source right now that I use. Um, and then behind that is is usually YouTube. Um, you can just type in cybersecurity in the YouTube search bar and there is hundreds if not thousands of accounts of people that do daily even weekly videos or podcasts that you can keep up with um you know some other stuff is um 
go ahead. The, what I think is something that, you know, even, you know, a casual person who, who was even thinking about the field is, is just creating a virtual environment and, and learning how to separate that from their computer. And then like Hayden said, make it a lab and just test different kinds of malware and, and try to, you know, reverse engineer it or stuff. I know it sounds like a big word, but if you go on YouTube, you can look up this stuff and it's really not that difficult to figure out. And it's actually really interesting and, and really cool to kind of figure out how these, these different types of attacks work and, 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 uh, and such. Yeah. That's great. Uh, for everybody who's viewing really this, um, Hayden is putting some, a list of resources in the chat. Uh, so definitely feel free to, to kind of go in there and copy and paste some of those into your notes. Uh, I'm also going to put one here, this specific YouTube channel, IT Security Labs. Uh, so the guy who runs this YouTube channel, he literally will walk you through setting up a lab, how to detect and even perform things like SQL injections and all sorts of uh, attacks and actually how they work, what it looks like all the way from the process perspective to the end user perspective. Uh, so that might be a good one. But like these guys are talking about, there are so many resources out there that it's really difficult to say, you know, here are the best ones because every day something new is popping up. Uh, Twitter, right? I know Twitter is a big one. A lot of people follow uh, Hayden. You mentioned Krebs on security. Hacker News is a big one. Um, but yeah, there's so many out there. So if you're interested and you're looking for free resources, uh, another one that I'll put in the chat, this is actually a, pod, a podcast that's run by SANS. It's uh, SANS Internet Storm Center. Okay, and so what these guys do is they literally put together a five minute podcast every day. And it's it's a quick five minutes on what is like the hot and heavy topics in cybersecurity. Um, and yeah, so Hayden, just keep, guys, feel free to put more in there. We, we only have a couple of minutes left, but real yeah. quick, any other questions outside of uh, resources that are used? I, I definitely want to open this up to some questions some, that you might have. Oh, if you don't mind, uh, yeah, when you do set up your lab, just make sure you don't pull the pin on a, a malware grenade and uh, you just blow it up on your computer without securing it first. Uh, that's usually not good. Uh, make sure you set up your lab correctly before you start, you know, clicking on stuff in the downloads folder. <laughs> You say that like you know how it feels. <laughs> when you are in cybersecurity, you deal with way too many, uh, we'll say, unpulled pins on the grenades in your copy and paste. So uh, you're going to be dealing with a lot of that stuff. You got to make sure you're very careful with your clicks in certain certain spots. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I know uh, Miguel mentions here, isolate your lab. So uh, yeah, any so of you guys want to chime in real quick? Uh, what are some What are some practical tips you guys might have in terms of isolating your lab? What are you, What are you guys using? What are you guys doing? I like using virtual box typically. Um, you know, the, the best thing to do is just use a sandbox. If Even if you don't want to build your own sandbox, there's plenty of, um, you know, paid services out there. Um, if you just want to give it a try for a few months or whatever, um, and then it's really not even on your machine, right? So that's what I'd recommend. It's just like sandbox everything. If you're going to be testing malware, it's kind of dicey, but, you know, that's the best option you've got. Perfect. Okay, great. Uh, Christine, while we have a couple of minutes, anything, any questions, anything that you saw come across the chat that maybe we missed? Yeah, absolutely, Eric. It uh, looks like uh, we were talking a lot about some of the helpful resources, um, you know, even just as some uh, final remarks from our, for our panelists about, you know, how somebody, you know, coming into this industry can long term kind of preserve and stay on top of their game as this industry is constantly evolving and we have emerging technologies constantly coming through. What might be some advice that you might be able to give those that are tuning in today? Be hungry, constantly yeah. be hungry, want to learn. Yeah. That's all you got to be is just, you know, find that drive be interested in the industry. You know, I mean, everybody's got a life out of cybersecurity. And like I said before, you can only work on a computer for so long each day, right? You have to have a life outside, do something that kind of decompresses you. But ultimately, if you're trying to preserve yourself, give your best and honest effort, um, do your best to try and learn new things. And if it interests you, it interests you. But ultimately, at the end of the day, if you're not interested in it, don't force yourself in it either. Find something you like that's better. Because yeah. you have to enjoy what you're doing in this industry. Perfect. OK. Let's see here. Uh, Will Hunt, I see you have a quick question here. Uh, since we're speaking of potential damage, what's some software or even hardware recommendations um, that you guys can share to avoid uh, damage? Uh, I mean, right off the right off the top, you know, sandboxing, using a virtual machine, virtual box. If you're on a Mac, maybe something like Parallels, right? Uh, what other tips could you guys throw out there? We've got probably 30 seconds left. 
I believe so, uh, there's a free version of malware bites, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yeah, you can use yeah. Sophos it's, as well. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, those are great. Another big one. Don't use the uh, the built-in browser password manager. If you can yeah. <laughs> if you can find your own password manager, definitely yeah. do that. It's ve it's very easy to to. I recommend Bitwarden for password managers. By the way. Bitwarden. Okay. Yep. Um. And yeah, and I guess if you're looking for like hardware, you're setting up a lab or whatever, and you just want to blow stuff up on it, just go pick up a piece of junk PC somewhere from a college that's near you. Like what I did at my old internship is I, you know, they had this um, this big room, a storage room of all the old devices they decommissioned. And you can just ask these people, hey, are you guys recycling this? Do you care if I take this? Can we wipe it? Can we reconfigure it or whatever? That's what I did. I have a, a piece of junk HP box. It's huge. And it sounds like a helicopter's taken off every time I turn it on, but that's my that's my lab. You know, if it can run anything, even like on a virtual machine or whatever, you're fine. That's great. Hey, listen, guys, we are we are at time. Uh, I just personally want to thank you all for your time. Um, and I want to let you know I'm proud of you. Seton Hall is proud of you. Uh, you guys were not only a big great part of the community, uh, but you continue to contribute to the community. And uh, we really appreciate everything you guys do. And we wish you the best of luck uh, in your careers. And we hope to keep in touch. All right, Christine, I think we're uh, wrapping up here, right? Absolutely. Thank you all for being a part of today's panel um, and for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the session.